Good afternoon. So glad you have joined us today for DI Lives, bringing automated intelligence to PolyJet and FDM support removal. Some success stories. We invite you to stick around after today's presentation for a live Q&A. We will get started momentarily. We are just waiting a couple of minutes for others to join us. Okay, we will go ahead and get started. Without further ado, I'll hand things over to Francesca Baird with Post Process Technologies. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, bringing automated intelligence to PolyJet and FDM support removal. We're going to be talking about some success stories today. So what we're going to cover in today's webinar, so I'm going to go over the state of the market and some post printing trends and realities. Then we're going to talk about the opportunity for automating post printing today. And then I'm going to go over some case study and examples, and then I'm going to wrap it up and pass it over to you guys for whatever questions that you might have. Um, so my name is Francesca Baird. I'm a customer success engineer here at Post Process. So I spend a lot of my time doing presentations like these, as well as live tours through our lab and uh, processing parts for our customers. Um, so who we are here at Post Process, uh, we are the first comprehensive solution provider for additive manufacturing's post printing needs. Um, so we have entered this space in order to allow the industry to scale to its fullest potential. So we have a range of patent pending machines that run our proprietary software and chemistry in order to provide post print solutions across all additive technologies. Um, but what we're going to focus on today is polyjet support removal and FDN soluble support removal. So a little bit about where the market currently is when it comes to post printing. So what we typically see being used if you haven't automated your post printing is either some component of manual labor, a retrofitted traditional manufacturing system or a combination of both. So when we're talking manual labor, this is extremely time consuming. You have to spend hands on time with each part to get it clean. And typically the people who are cleaning these parts are the same people who are running the printers and designing the parts. So we know your time is extremely valuable. And not only that, but when it comes to having that manual labor component and having really any human intervention, you're not going to be getting consistent results from day to day or person to person. As well, when we talk about the traditional manufacturing method sides of things, when you're using uh, machines that are not designed specific for these processes and these materials, you're going to end up with extremely high breakage rates and all of these things together tie in to make extremely costly post printing operations. Um, so what we typically see out in the market, this is actually from the Wohler's report, that it's estimated that 27% of a total part cost that's additive manufactured is from post printing. 
So we took a result of the state of post printing today and uh, from across the entire world and across all technologies, the two biggest challenges were time and consistency when it came to post printing. And when we asked our install base, specifically the number one reason that they switched to an automated solution was in order to save that manual labor. So all of that labor being used really is taking up time, costing money, and it's just not allowing the industry to scale. Um, so if you want to see this full report, you can go to postprocess.com backslash trends 2020. Talking a little bit about what we traditionally see out in the market, when we're talking FDM support removal, typically we're using, people are using submersion tanks that are using a non-additive specific uh, detergent. So these lead to really long and unpredictable cycle times. And the more that you use that detergent, the longer those cycle times get. So when your parts are spending all of that time submerged in the detergent, they're gonna become super waterlogged. And this is gonna, um, cause warpage and damage. So you're no longer gonna be keeping that geometry's integrity intact because of all the swelling due to the extended cycle times. And even if the geometry does remain intact, um, especially if you are sprinting, uh, printing any sparse parts, you're going to have extremely long dry times, which is drawing out the entire process time from start to finish. Um, so then when we're talking about the polyjet side of things, um, again, a water jet is not additive specific. Um, so particularly when we get into using uh, those Agilis or Tango or more rubber-like materials, these are extremely difficult to water jet and lead to really high breakage rates. Um, as well, the more complex that that part gets, the more difficult and the more time that you're going to have to spend over these manual controls cleaning this part. There's a really significant labor component when you're using this system, even though it's technically a manufacturing method. Um, but when we're getting into just talking manual labor because those traditional manufacturing methods don't work very well. We see a lot of people just resorting to doing it by hand. So this is going to lead to extremely high breakage rates and inconsistent results, again, because of that human component in there. And as well, your time is much more valuable than sitting hunched over, picking apart some support material off a part. So the solution that we have introduced is, um, as I mentioned before, it's this comprehensive approach of software, hardware, and chemistry that's all designed and tested to work specifically for the application. So getting into the solution specifics, first we're gonna talk about FDM. So the goal for FDM, um, number one, we're going to enable you to have higher throughput. So the total process time using post-process FDM support removal solution is between six to 10 times faster than traditional subversion tanks. We're gonna talk about some specific cases um, um, and specific users that have seen these successes and this decreased cycle times, but on average, we are able to you know, get our cycles between 30 and 90 minutes, which is extremely different than what we traditionally see in those submersion tanks. And not only is it going to be 30 and 90 minutes with a fresh batch of detergent, but for the entire lifetime of that detergent, you're gonna be getting those same consistent cycle times. And then because we do have those really rapid cycle times, we're really going to reduce the amount of time that you're spending waiting for those parts to dry. So on average, we have a typical drying time reduction that's larger than 60%. So if you're submerging your part, you're submerging your part in a tank and it's taking extremely long to clean, you're also going to be waiting a significant amount of time to let it dry out. So by using our spray solution, uh, we're going to speed up those cycle times and reduce the amount of time that you're going to need to wait for that part to dry out. So then another subsequent benefit of our solution, because of the fact that you're not having as much liquid exposure, is we're keeping that geometry intact. So that dimensional accuracy is still going to be there while we're reducing the risk of warpage or breaking apart. So I'm quickly going to pull up a list of support material that we have successfully removed. Um, so as long, really, as long as it's a soluble support, we do have success in our machine. Uh, if you don't see the support here, feel free to reach out to us or ask me a question at the end of the presentation. So now getting into the solution specifics for PolyJet. So again, this higher throughput is really important. And what's so different here is we're now allowing the ability to batch process. So no longer are you going to be spending time with hands-on with each one of those parts and that's going to enable you to increase your throughput. 
Now you're going to be able to grow your printing operation because you can post print at the rate that you're printing. So then specific to polyjet materials, what's really important here is the level of process control that we have over the mechanical energy sources that we use. So by having this level of process control that we achieve by the software components and sensor monitoring, we have the ability to print more difficult part geometries because now you can finish them. We're going to lower the labor costs because you're not having to spend as much hands-on time. You're not going to be having as many parts that are broken or warped due to your post printing. And then again, because you are doing batches of parts, they're all being processed the same and you're getting consistency from part to part regardless of who the operator is. And then regardless of what post-process solution you're using, we really minimize operator errors with each one of the tiers of our solution. So even though we do have that software component, I know that people get a little bit worried when you introduce software that it might be complex. We've made it extremely simple and intuitive. It has sort of a smartphone-like feel to it. So as soon as you start clicking around in it, you'll be able to pick that up. On the hardware side of things, we have proactive and preventative maintenance warnings. So you know when your machine is going to need maintenance. And then as well, we have step-by-step -step guides and photos that let you know exactly what needs to be maintained and how. We have one button recipe selection. So for all of those parameters that you set to run the machine, you don't even have to memorize those. You can name it indicative, indicative to a geometry or a material, whatever might help jog your memory. And then all of our chemistry is completely hands-free. You never have to do any manual mixing. And this is really going to help with reducing the hazards associated with chemical handling. So then when it comes to the support material that we've effectively removed on the polyjet side, um, we have the list here as well. We've had some really great success with the new 710. So now I'm going to roll into the case study part of this presentation. So getting started, um, as I mentioned, I was going to talk about a customer that saw these really significant improvements of not only decreasing operator time, but decreasing the cycle time in the machine. So the Toro Motor Company was using FDM for functional prototypes in their product development department. And so what they were doing prior to adopting a post-process solution was a support removal dunk tank, and then they were intermittently coming in, checking it, digging out some support. So it was extremely time consuming. It was taking about twice as long to clean the part as it was to print the part. So by implementing our solution, we were able to decrease on average the post printing time in the machine by 89% and the time that the operator had to spend by 90%. So I'm sure you can see how saving that much time and energy would be extremely valuable. Um, so Rob, who's been really great and worked with, a, with us on a couple of case studies and press releases and webinars, a direct quote from him was that the base took us from needing twice the build time to clean parts to just four times the build time on average. So with the base, we've been able to take the time required to get additive manufacturing components assembled and finished to a high, high level. Um, so if you want to read more of our case studies, you can go to postprocess.com backslash case studies. Um, but as well, I want to talk about uh, Proto Labs and their success with automating their polyjet support removal. Um, so you can see they were doing 90 parts per day and with uh, removing them with a uh, water jet as well as soaking, it was taking them 40 hours of manual labor per week and about 12 hours per part. So when they introduced automation, which was our solution, they were able to take that down to just 20 hours of labor per week and eight hours per cycle. So you can see that post-process, if you look at that quote on the side of your screen, we were able to reduce the labor time by 50%, freeing up 20 valuable labor hours per week. So now you have 20 more hours per week that you can be doing some more value-added activities. So then finally, before I get on to the questions portions of this and open it up to you guys, I want to talk a little bit about ROIs. Um, so first, I want to help you guys understand what we look at when we calculate an ROI. So a few of the key numbers that we look at are what your labor cost is, the time that you spend processing each part, and then what percentage of those parts are damaged during your current post-printing method. So then we compare this with what your post-printing cost would look like um, with one of our solutions, and then that results in an ROI. So the first example we're going to look at was the manual support removal of polyjet parts um, that they were using a traditional blaster. So they were doing over 50 parts per day. Um, in our solution, we were able to run 50 parts per cycle. Their labor rate was at $55 an hour. 
And so we decrease the operator time from eight minutes per part to just six seconds per part. So that saved over 33 hours per week, which resulted in a 20 week ROI. If you see that savings per part, being able to save over $7 per part is extremely compelling. And that's where that really rapid ROI comes from. When it comes to these really manual processes, they turn really great ROIs because you freeing up that time is so valuable. So then when we look at um, the FDM solution, so this customer was doing uh, 36 parts per day. There were larger parts, so we could do only six parts per cycle. However, with how rapid those cycle times are, that's really not an issue when it comes to throughput. Their labor rate was $40 per hour. And so we were able to decrease their technician time to just under three hours per cycle. So they were, so they were previously taking about three more hours of their own time to clean these parts before implementing our solution. So we were able to save them 14 technician hours per week, which this turned out to be a 19 week ROI. So you can see the savings per part and the savings per week that that resulted in, which is really drastic. However, something that's not captured in that is how much the cycle time was reduced and how much that speeds up your process. So the cycle time also was reduced by over 85%. Okay, so I know that was a lot of information to throw at you. So if you wanna learn more or see more case studies, you can go to postprocess.com and contact us. Uh, but now I'm gonna open it up to you guys for any questions that you might have.